Hello everyone and welcome for this uh, next tutorial on LaunchPy. I'm doing this tutorial a bit delay be, uh, behind the other tutorials that you are going to see on LaunchPy uh, because I have updated LaunchPy starting the version 0 0.3. Um, I have done the complete uh, new architecture of the module in order to get it um, a better and stable, more stable uh, architecture that you can use. Um, so I'm redoing the introduction to LaunchPy because this is where uh, the most important thing has, has changed. And uh, hopefully you will uh, follow along on how to get started with LaunchPy as a Python module. So in the previous video that you have on launch, um, you can actually see what launch is and have a, a start of a description of what launch uh, can do and um, or you can actually the different names that you will see in the following tutorials. In order to start using uh, LaunchPy with Python, you obviously need to do a pipe install LaunchPy that you have and you can do an upgrade if you already have it and it's not the version that I'm going to show now. Um, then once you have it, I'm going to go to my uh, tutorial folder. So I have a lot of things that I show over the over the course of the year. So it's a bit more, a bit bigger, a bit a bigger number of file that used to be. But what I do to start a Jupyter notebook is always the same. You need to have Jupyter notebook uh, installed um, on your computer, and then you open a, a PowerShell. And then you do Jupyter notebook here. And normally it should open me yeah, a new local host here. So you have uh, already the tutorial for launch by um, available for my previous tutorial. But I will start fresh again. Uh, and let's call it tutorial two, launch by two. Tutorial launch by two, and this one will be. We will start the same way, which is the import launch by function, and I will import it as LP because I'm very lazy and I don't like to uh, actually type launch by all the time. So I import launch launch by as LP, and then as I was uh, explaining you have the new architecture starting the version 0 0.3. So what you can do if you want to check that is to check at the uh, LP uh, Dunder version Dunder, that's how it's called. And then you can see that you are uh, 0 0.3 or above, uh, they will have the new architecture. So um, this version uh, start the same way, but uh, actually either you create a config file. You can autocomplete your elements uh, by uh, tapping tabs. It's exactly what I did. And then you create a config file. This config file will give you uh, this type of uh, element. So config example. And this is where you're going to. No, I don't want to do that. I just want to open it. Okay, I'm just going to show you my code. Here it's uh, showing something like this that you want to fill with the information uh, you have from your console.adobe.io. And that will actually give you uh, uh, the corresponding information that you need to have. So you can create that, but we won't do that because I already have one created. So I will just import it, a config file. And this is going to be config and do a, a tab to autocomplete and it will be complete config launch.json. So this will upload uh, the configuration and you can find this configuration in the config lp.config config object. And you see all of the different information I, I, I do have. I have also provided a new way to uh, configure your LaunchPy application, 
by doing lp configure Hop. and this by doing shift tab you can see the different elements that are required for that and yeah uh, and a description below of what can be done so this is exactly the same thing that import config file it's just if you don't want to use a json file then uh, you can use this mode and then you need to type everything that can be uh, handy at some point okay this uh, this is where now the new architecture is uh, changing so now i am actually needs to do uh, an admin instantiation so the admin class instantiation what that is it's nothing big it's just you need to have a variable that will take your admin class that i have created and before in the previous version uh, you could retrieve directly a company id that we will need to uh, retrieve the different properties uh, so here my different properties i need to have my uh, uh, company id for that and um, and that was done directly from the lp or the, the the root of the folder so i have encapsulated some of the method directly in the admin class so you have the admin class and we will see how to use that a bit in this uh, video at the introduction and we will also do uh, what has been done in the previous video um, with the old architecture so retrieving a property and instantiating the uh, pro uh, the property class so by doing admin uh, like this then i'm executing this and now that i have that you actually have doing a dot and then tab you can see what is possible to do and you can check your header so you can check my header and now it's actually this uh, what I do have and uh, you can also check uh, some endpoints so my endpoint is actually a reactor so you have some uh, elements you can check from there but what is very interesting is that you can get the company id and that is um, very important so this element is what you will need for getting the property and uh, yeah and from there you can start using the launchpy application with all of your properties so you can either assign this result in a variable like say my property but i also updated this uh, application so it's automatically save it in an attribute so you can actually look at the admin company id uh, like this and this is exactly here and what we need that to as i explained to get the properties and this is also done through <coughs> the admin uh, instance so the get property so every time you get a get property you retrieve information when you use uh, create you, you post information to the server and when you use delete you delete and so forth uh, you get the property the same way you can actually look if you're using Jupyter notebook i encourage you to do that uh, for the start of the of using this package you look the doing a shift tab and then you can see that i need the company id so let's just take this i can copy the string but let's just take this and my properties and now i have my properties inside that variable but the same way i did um, with the company id because properties are something you always want to check uh, you can actually access them through the properties attribute of your admin instance so i have all the properties so actually i can get to the zero and that is uh, very interesting because you see all of the different elements uh, that is creating the properties so you have the id you have the type of element that is uh, you can see the token the platform it's a web application which launch application if uh, sequen sequencing has been enabled or not and uh, the different elements for the rules the different paths to get the rules and so forth for this property um, what i try to explain uh, now is how to actually look that information so when you are new to python you're like okay this is uh, very 
how to uh, work with this kind of information, but actually not so much. So I can actually look for all of the name for my different properties. You can see how many properties you have by doing the length. So admin uh, properties. So I have eight and I have access to the first one. So zero, we start at zero. And I can look at the different name by doing for prop in admin properties print the attribute of prop. So by doing for prop in, it will look at each of those elements in that list. So prop for the first iteration takes the value zero. Uh, so this element, and then when it's the iteration ends, then it takes a second one and so on and so forth and so forth. So when I'm in the first one or a second one, I know the structure will always look the same. So actually, I can actually look at the attributes. And I was saying, I want to look at the name of it. And by doing that, I see all of those different uh, properties that I do have uh, in my launch. As you can see, start with SEDL demo test and it ends with test property. And it starts with SEDL demo test. And and with test property. So it's really mimic. You can really see that the API gives you the same information than the UI. So um, what I really like to do um, is actually to have uh, uh, to have the, the way to deal with that in the one liner. And in order to do that, yeah, you can use something called the comprehension list. And this is something very helpful because you can use that everywhere. Um, and that therefore I will present that to you now. And we will use that directly afterwards uh, in order to retrieve the information from uh, the property and create your property connection. So uh, we can do that. It's exactly a for loop, but instead we're going to do, we're going to say, we want to get that information. So we want to get the uh, the property attribute name every time we get a prop in admin property. So basically we're looping inside here. And by doing that and doing my props, it's exactly the same. But as you have seen here, I was printing and it's, it was one by one printing. Here, what I'm printing is the complete list. So there is a hout because it's a dimension being outputted. And here there is nothing output it, it's, it's the print. So I actually, yeah, uh, printing this uh, information into the console. So it's a list, it's common, it, it starts with the bracket and end with the bracket. There is some commas and, and, and some so forth. And that is very valuable if you want to actually use that uh, with the next property. So I want to use, I want to look at that analyst. So I want to have that analyst. Data analyst property prop. And that I can do with the same element. I don't want to retrieve the name now. I want to retrieve everything. So for prop in prop, prop for prop in prop will exactly do the same thing at the moment. But what I do is I don't I want to select only when it's data analyst. So I had a condition. I had a condition saying if my prop name equals data analyst. And now, if you look at the length of this data analyst prop, you see it's only one. It's only one element. It's my data analyst prop. You can have a look at that. And yeah, you see the ID, uh, the name of it, and so forth. And we will be able to use that information for calling actually our next class, uh, which is up, the property class. And the pro what the property class does, uh, it actually uh, gives you information about everything inside your property, so the number of rules and so forth. So let's start with the property class. 
and we will end the video here uh, but just to start there this part didn't change so the, the part that really changed was the creation of the admin before all of those things were, were outside the admin and now you have to instantiate first the admin it's better and more secure um, and then I'm going to use that data analyst prop by creating a data analyst LP property and saying data analyst so you can always check data object no, 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 no. Oh, there are some elements and you can see uh, the attributes that we can use the data that we pass for uh, to the class for the instance creation so this is what I need to pass completely so this in, this will contain all the information I need and then I can do that obviously Up. I need to because it's a list I need to select the only element of the list here it is um, otherwise it's try to look and it look at the list and it's okay which one should I select so I'm take I'm pushing the, the only one there is no one there is uh, there is no two so zero is the one and there is not uh, you cannot put one here because it does not exist we have seen it's only contain one element and now if I look at that analyst, I can actually look at the ID, look at the name, I can look at the data analyst, endpoint, and so forth. So um, we'll see in the next video that now you have created a connection to get different element or create different element. So if I want to get the rules, I do a get rules um, and that will retrieve me all the rules that I do have. Uh, but we will see that in the next video. Um, just to end up with the admin, admin has other uh, elements that are available for you. So you can check them by doing a dot and then so you can see you can get audit events, uh, you can get the extension catalog, you can get the properties that what we have shown. Um, and we can also create a property. So if I want to create a new property, I just need to give it a name, my new prop. Uh, you have some option that you can use. So, um, oh, I need to pass a company ID. I forgot about that, but you need to do that. You can say which platform you want to use. If you want to use the sequential, uh, if you want to return the class, a class will automatically return uh, this kind of data analyst variable that are directly connected. Uh, so you, you can directly add rules, you can directly add stuff into your property from there. So let's do this very briefly because it's very uh, easy. So I just need to get the company ID as I was explaining. I was going to miss that tuck. The rest, uh, as you may have seen, they already have some default value on, so I don't actually need anything. I'm going to do that. Here you see that it returns me uh, some uh, value that I didn't save uh, and I should if I wanted to use that, but this was just for the sake of the presentation. So my new properties should appear here when I'm refreshing. So now I'm refreshing and I have another new property. When it's live. My new prop is here now. You see, it's a web uh, platform and so forth. So, I hope you have found this introduction uh, helpful and that uh, now you are uh, aware of this admin class that may not be mentioned in the next videos. Uh, but yeah, if you do the video in orders as you should, uh, then you have seen that uh, the admin uh, class exists and, and now hosts several methods. Talk to you soon.